Then on Sports Central, we'll be going over our next full prediction of this 2020 offseason, and it will be over the Tennessee Volunteers. And this is a team that went 8 and 5 in 2019. And if you remember their schedule, I mean, this team improved a ton over 2019. They started off really slow, had a couple of really bad losses in there. However, at the end of the season, this team was just as good as most teams in the SEC. I mean, they were really, uh, they really ramped it up towards the end of the season. And that's a big reason why I think Tennessee will be a big SEC dark horse in 2020. And we're gonna be going over more as to why I think that in this video, as well as a full prediction on Tennessee's schedule and a full preview in the process. So yeah, with that, let's look at your season trends from Tennessee in 2019 once again. Uh, these are very important to see how much Tennessee improved over 2019. They were three and five between September and October. So once again, uh, especially in the or especially in September, I mean, September is almost always your easier month. I mean, you got several non-conference opponents that usually are not very good. And for Tennessee to go three and five between those first two months, I mean, this team did not look like they'd even have a chance at a bowl game last season. However, they really flipped the script in November. They ended up going five and zero between November and the postseason. And this team really looked good, especially at the end of the season once again. Some of your key wins from last season, you beat Mississippi State on October 12th, 20-10. Also had a good win against Kentucky on the road, 17-13. Had another good road win at Missouri, 24-20. And also a win in your bowl game in the Gator Bowl against Indiana, 23-20. So one, or 22. So once again, for Tennessee, great season all around. Um, especially, I mean, in the later parts of the season, this Tennessee team really looked good. I mean, they could have really beaten anyone in the last half of the season. As far as the returning production goes, you return their top quarterback, Jared Garantano, which he was a decent quarterback last season, nothing special at all, but he had over 2,100 yards with 16 touchdowns and 8 interceptions, so he definitely has a ton of potential to put up some big yardage. I mean, for him to have over 2,000 yards, and he's got, also got a pretty decent touchdown-interception ratio. His accuracy, though, uh, he could certainly improve, but in the end, I think Jared Garantano is, uh, he's definitely got potential as a quarterback in itself. They do return their top running back, Ty Chandler, which is huge in my opinion. Uh, he's got a decent amount of yardage off of 2019. He had over 700 yards with three touchdowns last season. They also returned their running back two and running back three in Eric Gray and Tim Jordan. And both of them combined for nearly 1,100 yards last season, especially Eric Gray. I mean, he's a great running back. He had just over 650 yards with five touchdowns last season. Meanwhile, Tim Jordan had just over 470. So. Uh, yeah, this running back core is looking really good heading into 2020 for Tennessee. I think this running back core could quite honestly be one of the best in the SEC in general. I mean, when you got all three of your running backs returning, and um, especially, I mean, Ty Chandler being as good as he is, I think Ty Chandler in himself, in, in himself could put up over 1,000 yards next season. I mean, he's definitely got potential for that. And, I mean, as far as the receiving core goes, you do lose a couple of big receivers. Of course, you lose your top one in Jawan Jennings, which he had just over 1,000 yards with nine touchdowns last season. You also lose your second wide receiver in Marquez Callaway, which he had just over 630 yards with six touchdowns as well. So, yeah, as far as your top two receivers go, I mean, especially Jawan Jennings, it's going to be a tough loss, especially for Jared Garantano. But in the end, you do return your third receiver in Josh Palmer, which I think he's got a ton of potential. Uh, he's got over 450 yards with one touchdown on last season, and You'll probably be expecting him to have a lot of action next season. And I mean, overall for Tennessee too, the recruiting has overall been pretty good. So I'm sure uh, they'll get a good receiver out of that. So as far as the offensive line goes, you do lose two on the offensive line. Uh, you also lose two linebackers on the defense with one safety. And you also lose your top tight end, Dominic Wood Anderson. So yeah, overall, I mean, for the offensive line, you do lose a couple of big weapons. And on the defense, I mean, you only lose big, like three big starters. So I mean, for Tennessee, I think that really they're looking pretty good as far as the returning production goes. I mean, especially on the defense, only losing three. Tennessee is a team to watch out for in 2020. I mean, if you watch my schedule preview on this team, I really am expecting a great season out of Tennessee. And honestly, more than some people, I know some people are predicting Tennessee may just edge a bowl game, six, seven wins, but I think Tennessee could go far beyond that, in my opinion. I mean, is Tennessee a national dark horse? I would say that they are. I mean, if Jared Garantono especially can improve a ton, if he can put up 3,000 yards at least this season, I mean, I definitely think he can do that. But, I mean, if he can do that, that would be huge for Tennessee. And I think this team could easily make a bowl game uh, and quite honestly go much further than that if he does that. Possible surprise contender in the SEC East for Tennessee. It's tough to say right now. Uh, but I say, I mean, we when you got Florida and Georgia all in your same division, I mean, it's been basically a dogfight between Florida and Georgia uh, over the past few seasons to win that division. And Tennessee has been... 
kind of on the outside of that. I mean, they never really have been able to kind of get in that conversation, but I definitely think Tennessee has got a chance to be right towards the top. I, I mean, you could expect them to be second or third in the division for quite a while. I don't I don't think that they'll win the division next season. I just think Florida especially uh, has gonna, is going to have a great season. I mean, if you watch my prediction on Florida, I'm expecting um, an 11-win season out of them. So, yeah, Florida is definitely a team to watch out for. But, I mean, in Georgia in general, I think Georgia will be great too. So, yeah, for Tennessee to be able to knock over uh, both Florida and Georgia, I think it's just a little bit of a push to say that. But once again, Tennessee, still I do expect to have a good season in 2020. As far as your schedule goes, you start off the season on September 5th against Charlotte. Then you have to travel to Norman for a big test against Oklahoma. Watch out for that one there. Uh, that could be a big game for both sides um, for sure. And then you got Furman, of course, back at home on the 19th. So overall, I mean, your September is not all that bad. I mean, Charlotte and Furman should both be knockover games. I think Tennessee has no problem with those. But Oklahoma and Florida, you got to play both of those in that month too. And yeah, of course, I mean, both of those teams I do expect to be potential top 10 teams in 2020. So yeah, you got two of your biggest tests in September as well. As far as your October goes, you got Missouri to kick it off on the 3rd. Then you got South Carolina on the 10th. Then you got an Alabama game, which is also very important on the 24th. And then you got Arkansas on the road to finish off October. As far as your November goes, you got Kentucky on the 7th, followed by Georgia, Troy, and Vanderbilt in that order. So once again, this Tennessee schedule, I mean, if Tennessee did not have as tough of a schedule, um, I definitely think they could easily get up to 10 wins next season. Uh, but it's really tough once again. I mean, when, when you got Oklahoma along with Florida, Alabama, and Georgia all in the same schedule, and you can't forget about the road trips to South Carolina. And I mean, overall for Tennessee, just, it's just a tough schedule for them this season. And I mean, here's what I'm expecting out of your September. I think you get one loss. I think you have a huge win over Florida. And I mean, I think Tennessee's going to be uh, the only loss Florida even has next season. I mean, Tennessee being at home in a really tough environment, I think they knock off Florida there. That's going to be a huge win. However, I do think that you lose to Oklahoma and Norman. I mean, I kind of went back and forth on that game, but with it being on the road, and I'm sure it'll probably be a night game considering a week two usually isn't a very good week of the season. Uh, it's, it's really tough to say right now for Tennessee, and I think Oklahoma does get the win there in the end. But, I mean, I think the experience from that Oklahoma game could definitely fare them well against Florida a couple weeks later. So I do think that they beat off Florida. That's probably going to be their big signature win of the season. And so once again, they're going to be 3-1 through September. As far as your October goes, you're going to have one loss in there as well, and that's going to be Alabama. I think you knock off Missouri and South Carolina. Once again, the games highlighted in yellow are wins. I just think they're going to be close wins, so that'd be uh, less than 13 points. And I do expect them to get tough wins against Missouri and South Carolina. As far as the Alabama game goes, once again, Alabama, I think, I think they're going to be a great team next season too. I mean, you could expect a 11-10 win season out of them as well. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me a single bit if Alabama went undefeated. So, yeah, that game's going to be really tough. But I do expect that you get an easy win over Arkansas to finish off October. As far as your November goes, you, I mean, I think that's honestly your easiest month. You got Kentucky at home, then you got Troy and Vanderbilt, two knockover teams to finish off the regular season. So this schedule honestly fares out pretty well for Tennessee. You don't have all three of your big tests, or all four is why I should say, all in consecutive weeks. So that already is a big bright side there. But I do expect you to lose to Georgia too. I mean, that one will be a close one, I do think. But I think Georgia gets the win in the end there. But otherwise, your November, I think you blow over every other opponent with Kentucky, Troy, and Vanderbilt. So that leads your record prediction to be 9-3 for Tennessee next season. Once again, I think this team could definitely get up to 10 wins, but it's just that tough schedule that they've got. Uh, you got road trips to Oklahoma and Georgia next season. I think both of those will probably be uh, guaranteed guaranteed losses. I mean, I don't, I don't expect Tennessee to win uh, by any of those teams, but I do believe the Alabama game could be close. Uh, watch out for that one, of course, with it being at home, and Tennessee has a big home field advantage. Who knows what could happen there, but... Once again, in the end for Tennessee, your record prediction is 9-3. and three. With that, that about wraps up our schedule prediction on Tennessee. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you think of this team, as well as if you, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap a like on it. Subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel, and I'd really appreciate that a ton. But once again, thank you guys all for watching. Thanks, and yeah, stay tuned for more from All Sports Central, and we'll see you all later.